Welcome back to the Progressive Brothers Podcast. This is episode 67. Please hit the like button as you come in, share the video if possible, and hit that notification bell so you get all the updates from the Progressive Brothers Podcast. Also, make sure you follow us on Twitter at Brothers underscore podcast. So today's topic is 9-11, right? Today's the anniversary, or when you hear this today, that day will be the anniversary of the Twin Towers being attacked. And I wanted to discuss something in particular, which is the Muslim discrimination aspect of 9-11. There was a lot of suspicion about Muslims. There was all sorts of laws put in place and surveillance and civil rights violations that came out of uh, 9-11 against Muslims in particular. And so I find this interesting because I hear a lot of Arab Muslims in the United States, Arab American Muslims, talk about their experiences after 9-11. But, and I sympathize with those people, but what I do want to point out is that we can go back to the 50s and 60s of the FBI under J. Edgar Hoover's mass surveillance program against Muslim uh, African Americans or black Muslims back then. See, people think that the anti-Muslim uh, movement in uh, in America started with 9-11, but no, we can go back to the 1960s. We know that Malcolm X was being spied upon, eavesdrop, uh, all sorts of uh, privacy violations, uh, such as the Fourth Amendment being um, being violated unconstitutionally and unjustly to spy on the African American community from the Nation of Islam perspective. And so, I, I bring this up so that people understand that there is some context, this historical context behind this, that the anti-Muslim movement did not start after 9-11 or on 9-11, but actually during the black power struggles of the 40s, 50s, and 60s, and more importantly, the 60s, uh, J. Edgar Hoover had a massive uh, surveillance program against them. And so you had Malcolm X being spied upon all throughout his travels domestically and internationally, the Nation of Islam being spied upon domestically, and you know, even your Black Panthers, you can throw them in there, but this is more about Muslims. And so I find this interesting that the laws that were really crafted after 9-11 to kind of spy on and address, you know, these suspicions about Muslims was really about Muslims and Arabs being niggerfied in the context of white supremacy. The ideology that basically supersedes everything else and justifies constitutional and civil rights violations of a particular group of people, just not white people. And so, although Arabs may feel that they're under the gun, black people have been under the gun long before that. This isn't about a struggle Olympics or trying to compare the struggles between one group of people versus the other, but to actually bring some context that they was basically going after anybody who was not white and Christian. And so when we have a conversation about 9-11 and its impact on the quote unquote Muslim community, which Muslims are you referring to? Because before there was a 9-11, you did have planes being used against African Americans, right? not just Black Wall Street, but the MOVE movement in Philly. They did use helicopters to drop incendiary bombs on the MOVE movement to try to disrupt any sort of solidarity and anti-colonial struggles back then. That was only 30 years ago. And then we see most of your mosques today that are being spied upon, well, they were doing that to African Americans too. They were eavesdropping on the phone lines of people within the Nation of Islam, 
true to Islam and everything else. Right? So it's important to have this conversation or at least bring some context to this so that we can have a better understanding that 9-11 is not this sort of new uh, progenitor of despising all Muslims, but the actual ramifications that came out of that were new agencies and new policies, but spying on Muslims and because of a, a tragic event, it didn't take a tragic event to spy on African Americans, and, and especially in the uh, in the, in the uh, sector of Islam. They had already been doing that. But they created a social construct out of um, out of Islam when it came to non-white people because Islam now is seen as well I shouldn't say Islam but being Muslim is being seen as a nigger and Arab is a new black so any every Arab person that walks around especially the more browner they are the more suspicious they are okay? and this includes Palestine mostly because that's where it's really originated from the suspicion of Muslims because they assume that Palestine is one Muslim state and, and so they can't be trusted. But for the sake of conversation here, they've made Arabs out to be the new black and Islam to be the new nigger. And it, people have to really wrap their head around this and really kind of get a grasp on what's going on here that only white people can really deem it this way. And they use that to break up communities. Right? To try to make it seem like Islam cannot be trusted. Muslims cannot be trusted. Arabs cannot be trusted. Black people in the mosque cannot be trusted, right? And they dress diligently, they're the most respectful, hardest working. But if you let white people tell you, white Christians and evangelicals tell you, they'll have you believe that these people just cannot be trusted at all. Even though historically it was white people, white Christians who went around lynching people especially black men, cutting the genitals off of black men, robbing people of their wealth, their assets, using biplanes in 1921 to bomb communities. They did all this. So how can we have a conversation post 9-11 about coming together when we have not reconciled with the past? A lot of people want to upload content now and make it seem like, oh, well, I was in New York during 9-11. Yeah, but what was the impact of you being in New York? What was your what was your experience as a black man, right? You need to really think a little deeper on what happened after 9-11 and what was happening prior to 9-11. We you know J. Edgar Hoover had a massive surveillance program against black people. Muslims and the radicals, but more importantly, Muslim, because they did not trust Islam back then. That was 40 years, uh, if, if not um, 50 years prior to 9-11. And so we see now, 20 years after 9-11, uh, we still have the same exact issues. And so the common denominator here, or, or the, com yeah, the common denominator here is that they don't trust anybody who's not white. Meanwhile, you have an insurrection at the Capitol and people are saying that they were peaceful protesters at the Capitol. I don't know how that happens because if they were Muslim, like what we saw in 1995, October 16th, where you had a million man march, they flew Clinton out of, out of Washington DC and took him somewhere else. Him, he and his family outside of the White House and, and put them somewhere else because they were fear that you know these million black men who are marching at the behest of the Honorable Louis, uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan, that something bad was going to happen. But see, when ten thousand people, ten thousand white people, conservatives descend upon the Capitol, there was no military response. There was no you know, uh, 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 police response in the capacity that they had for, you know, uh, 
black people, uh, black men more importantly, during the Million Man March. So I'm bringing, I'm having this conversation now just to bring some context behind what's going on post 9-11, but what happened pre 9-11 too, that there was a story that happened before there was uh, September 11th. Like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on Twitter, Brothers underscore podcast.